Hello fellow hams and YouTubers. Well, magnetic loop antennas is the topic today and a simple modification that you can do that improves the efficiency of the uh, loop quite a bit. Uh, I haven't seen anybody talking about this, but here's how I stumbled on, on it. Um, I was at the Fort Wayne Ham Fest last weekend and I brought my junk box mini magnetic loop uh, as an attention getter and conversation starter. And uh, while I was there, um, Alpha Antennas was there. Now they make portable um, antennas and they make a nice portable coaxial based magnetic loop. Um, there's other coaxial based loops out there like the Alex loop. Um, they've been around for a while. Uh, one of the problems with using coax, as I understand it, is the braid of the coax, the, sh the shield is used as the conductor and it's not a solid conductor and the density of that braid um, and the resistance of that braid can make a difference on efficiency and coaxial based magnetic loops are known to be or understood to be less efficient than a solid conductor like a copper pipe. Uh, well Alpha Loops antenna performs really well and uh, while I was talking to the owner of Alpha Loops I, I, <laughs> I took my little uh, mini loop over to his table he thought it was cool and uh, we had a really neat conversation um, but he uh, talked about some experimenting he was doing while he was developing his coaxial loop. And one of the things he mentioned stuck in my mind and uh, I couldn't wait to get home and experiment with it. And that's what this video is about. And it's a very simple change um, that you can make that greatly improves uh, the magnetic loop. Uh, well, greatly might be a strong word, but it is definitely an apparent improvement. And it's one of the... Uh, first things I've seen that really make a big difference that I think is worth talking about. So let's go to the computer over here and uh, we'll talk about uh, magnetic loops, my experiments, and uh, the modification and uh, what it is. So in the uh, common magnetic loop you have a big outer loop. You'll have a variable capacitor down here and uh, you have a smaller coupling loop. Now when I first started playing around with um, magnetic loops, I was curious as to why the coupling loop was offset from the center. It seemed to me that a symmetrical arrangement would provide more equidistant, um, more, uh, more even coupling across the loop. And I, you know, I didn't understand loops, I was experimenting with them. And so what I did was I built one and then I tried moving the coupling loop further and further inwards away from the outer loop. And what I discovered was that that hurt the loop greatly. The further in I moved this thing, um, the lower the radiated power, the higher the SWR, uh, it just did not work well. And the closer I got this to the edge of the outer loop, um, the better things got. And I thought that was interesting at the time. Uh, but anyway, to the tweak. In a regular magnetic loop design, these are both circular, the outer loop and the inner loop. And this area, this area where the two loops are closest together is pretty small. Now, oops, there we go. Now, um, what the uh, alpha loop guy told me was during his experiments, he tried squashing this coupling loop into more of an oval shape, like so. And when you do that, the area where the two loops are closest together is greater. And he said that that improved the output. So I couldn't wait to get home and try that myself. And it did make a big difference. A big difference. I mean, you know, it's a small difference overall, but relative to the existing conditions, it's a big difference. So let's go down to the bench and I'll show you what I did with my loop. Well, we're down here at the bench and I have redone the coupling loop on my little magnetic loop. As you can see, I moved, there's a screw hole here where this screw used to be. I had to move this up oh, about a half an inch in order to deform the loop and flatten it down. 
And now I have a much longer area here where the two loops are closer together. Instead of just a tiny little area there, we've got oh, a good inch either side now where they're, they're closer together. And uh, the difference uh, is apparent right away. Uh, let me reposition the camera and show you the antenna analyzer. Now from my previous video, when I first rebuilt this loop, you might recall that on the higher frequencies, 20 meters, 17 meters, 15 meters, I had a difficult time with uh, getting the SWR down below about 1.3 or 1.2 to 1. Well, with the squashed coupling loop now, here we are on 15 meters, and as I adjust the loop, I can get that right down to nothing. Little hand capacitance interaction there. There we go. Uh, you can see I can get that right down, uh, just to absolute nothing. Um, so that is a dramatic improvement right away. In the previous video, I thought the proximity of the antenna analyzer and the coax to the loop was interacting, and that was why I couldn't get the SWR down. Well, no. Uh, I've got the analyzer right next to the loop. I've got the coax right next to the loop. So it's not interaction. Um, the squashed coupling loop is definitely making a big difference in uh, how low I can get the SWR. Let's go down to 20 meters. And we'll adjust the capacitor. There's our dip. Fine tuning cap. And again, I can get it right down to nothing. No problem at all. So yeah, that's a big improvement in the uh, performance, or at least the SWR performance of the antenna. What about radiated um, RF? Now, as you know from the previous video, part of the design of my loop includes this field strength meter that's embedded right here in the loop. <clears throat> Here's the pickup wire. And I use this as a fine tuning aid, a nice visual indication of the radiated power of the loop. So when I'm fine tuning the caps, um, I can quickly tune the loop for the lowest SWR just by looking for the maximum meter deflection. This also gives me a nice uh, way of measuring the relative power or the radiated power of the loop by how far that meter deflects. Now here is a picture of the meter deflecting during whisper testing with the circular coupling loop before I squashed it. And this is on 40 meters with the FT817 putting out a half a watt. The adjustment knob on the meter is all the way up, full sensitivity. And now here is the meter with the exact same conditions and settings and same power with the squashed coupling loop. And you can see there's quite a bit more deflection. Um, the loop is radiating a little bit more power. So there is definitely an improvement in the efficiency of the loop by simply squashing the coupling loop. So there you go. Um, a pretty simple change you can make that definitely improves the efficiency of a magnetic loop. Um, I'm kind of excited about that. I'm going to rework my big three-foot loop um, doing the same thing. Uh, it, certainly, uh, it certainly makes a difference. I hope you found this informative and uh, interesting. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.